So today we'll do the Python IPython review lesson eight, and then uh, next week we'll we'll do a, a lesson all about regular expressions. This is re going to be really useful, and then uh, we'll start to dig into NumPy and pandas. And then the following week we'll do all uh, pandas. There's a lot of stuff to do with these data frames and, and ways of, of processing data. Um, and then we'll do plotting. Uh, and remember, these two lessons are going to be on the same day, on that Wednesday, because the Monday is a Veterans Day holiday. We'll come back and do more Panda stuff. Um, we'll have uh, uh, some statistics, visualization, and then some more advanced topics in Python and, Git and GitHub. So that's where we're going. So let's click on Lesson 8. And... We're going to click on this raw link, uh, copy that link, and then close that. We're going to open up our terminal. Going to go to the uh, folder for the course, which is in our home folder, and the lessons folder inside that. And then we do this curl dash capital O, which will uh, copy that U URL file to our um, to our current directory, and it's going to keep the same name because we use that dash o. Okay. Now we're going to source activate Python three. And we're going to type Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so we're going to go to lesson eight. And um, so there's readings listed here for the day. Uh, this is now we're in the McKinney um, Python for Data Analysis textbook or uh, you know, book from, from O'Reilly Publisher. And we've got our table of contents here. So we're going to do a review of some Python stuff. We're going to do a Python script example, IPython review, some Jupyter Notebook command review, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the star operator thing. So actually, um, what we want to do is, um, let's do this a little differently. So I want to actually have you close the notebook. So we'll get some practice uh, closing the notebook. So. Go ahead and um, close the window, close both windows, and then hit um, Control C, and you can say shut down. You can type Control C again, which will just say yes, or we can type no. It didn't do it fast enough, so uh, I'm just going to hit Control C again a couple times. Um, and actually, let's go back to the GitHub page and look at the notebook there. Um, and I'll, sh I'll explain why in a second. So let's go back to our lessons, lesson eight. So this is the same thing we were just looking at on our computer, but here it's just on, um, on the web. So there's a few things I want to um, illustrate that will rely on Python 2. So actually we're going to use Python 2 for a little bit. Um, we already made that Python 2 environment, so this should be easy. So we can go back to our terminal and type source deactivate, or if you're using Windows, it, I believe the command is conda deactivate. And now you see that um, that little name of the environment went away. So now we're going to do source activate Python 2. Um, and the reason for this is that there are some things that work differently in Python 2 than in Python 3 that I want to illustrate. Um, and uh, also just gives you a little familiarity with this other version of Python that while I don't recommend you use, um, in most cases you might be in a situation where um, you're using someone else's code that was in Python 2 or uh, you know, there's some some incompatibility that you need to be aware of. So, so what we're going to do is cover 
here some some of the um, methods that we or some of the data types that we talked about in the last couple of lessons and we're gonna test out a few different other um, other methods that, that, that work with them so we've got uh, we have a, li a list object and we have these various options for lists so we can append items we can extend the list um, by uh, adding a another list to it we can insert or remove we can um, remove something from the last position and return it using pop. Uh, we can get the index of an item in a list. We can count the number of times a certain thing appears in a list. We can sort a list. We can reverse the order of a list. So what I want to do is um, show you how we can use Python uh, just like we would in a notebook but in the command line. So this is often handy if you don't want to have to open up a notebook. You just want to work in the command line. And uh, so we can type IPython. First, uh, before I do that, I'm going to, I don't think I showed you this command. There's a command called clear, which will clear my screen. It's actually all still there. It just went up to the, um, to the top. So this is a nice way to get a clear screen. So I can type IPython. And now... Uh, I'm in my uh, my Python two environment says Python three, so that's not good. Uh, let me see what's going on here. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's maybe the IPython version isn't Python. Or what, or, do you guys have the same thing? What, you just, you have a Python two uh, IPython? Okay. What was it, what were you saying? Okay. Well, this is fine. Um, I'm not sure why it is, but I don't want to take time to figure it out. So unless I, what I'm going to do is, for you guys, it should. You know, there's only a couple examples where the behavior is different, but we'll we'll see. So this will be a good exercise. You should you might see something different than what I did. Okay. Um, so let's. What we're going to do is we can copy the commands from here. So in um, in the Python, actually, here's what I can do. I don't I don't need to use I don't need to use IPython right now. So you can leave I, IPython open. I'm going to use um, regular Python. So you notice that the prompt looks a little different with the Python. Um, when you type Python, you open up the Python interpreter interactive environment and it, it gives you this these three little arrows um, with IPython you get this in and then in brackets a number and that that refers to the command number um, we'll, we'll see how that works in a minute okay so what I'm gonna do is and you can follow along um, I I'm gonna copy this command and paste it here. So we just what we're doing is we're just making a list that has some integers and some floats. Um, and so what we can do is we can test out this count command. So we're going to count the number of times uh, that these different things appear in the list. So for example, again, I'm just going to copy and paste the, the command. So we're gonna we're gonna print three things here. We're gonna print the the count that um, three thirty three appears, six six point two five and x, which is just a string here. So so three thirty three appears twice, uh, sixty six point two five once, and, and x uh, zero times. Now we could have removed this print command and got the same thing. So because we're executing the command, um, especially because it's the last command we entered, it, we're going to just get the output of that command. Okay, so we can also insert something. So we can insert uh, we can insert at position 2, which is here, a negative 1, and we can append. So these are just different methods of lists. 
So because A is a list, it has all these methods that it comes with. So now we can append something. Now if I type A tab, I don't get any I don't get any help. But if you type A dot tab, you're gonna get all these commands coming up, right? You guys see that on your IPython? So this is why IPython is is better than the regular Python because it it, ha it has all this extra um, kind of rich content that it gives you. It makes your life a lot easier. Uh, if I want to know the position of 333, it's going to uh, give me the first time that that appears. It's going to tell me the, which position in the list. Um, and we can remove that item too. Um, and it will remove it the first time that it appears. Um, if I want to reverse A, I can uh, use this reverse command and it will change the order and, and, and reverse it. Um, or if I want to sort it, I can use the sort method, and now it's numerically sorted from the smallest to the largest values. Um, and I want, if I want to pop uh, an element off, in fact, um, I'll show you two different ways to do this. One is a, uh, if we do the list dot pop, a is now we've removed this last element and it's returned that. Now, if we actually wanted to save that. Um, we could do, you know, something like this, where we say b equals a dot pop. So now we've popped off that last element. Now there's only one 333 there, and b now has that is that has that value. So it's a way to take a value from one list and pop it onto another thing. In this case, it's a just a, a floating point value. Um, So um, things like insert, remove, sort, that they modify the list. They don't return anything. So when you execute them, um, you don't see anything printed to the screen. If you were to try to store that command as something else, it doesn't return anything. It just returns a none. Mm -hmm. Question? Yes. Yes, uh, yes you can pop, um, let me, let me, I don't think, let me do, yeah, so that's, this is where um, I want to use my IPython, so if we do, because if, if IPython I can pull up the help documentation, I can, Figure out exactly what I what I want to do. Let's see if I can do. If I can pop off a slice. Hmm. I have to see. I think that might not be the right command. I mean, you can do. Let me think. I mean, you can you can make a slice of that list, and you can pull off any number of elements. Like, if you wanted, uh, well, maybe I need to. Do, let's try this real quick. No. So if you wanted to do, um, like get the last two elements of A, you can do this. Um, in this case, it won't, uh, it won't store that. It won't change the value of A, but you can easily do A. So you could you could do it this way. Um, I believe there's a way to do exactly what you're asking, but this is an equally good alternative. So you can use this. Um, if you want the last two elements to be in, a, in one list and the rest of the list to be in another, 
you can use the indexing of this way, right? So the last two elements, you do minus two to the end. That would give you the last two. And then for the rest, you do from the beginning to minus two. Um, and because of the way the Python sort of fence post indexing works, you get like what you want. So this is this is where this like weird kind of numbering system comes in handy, right? Um, so we talked about dictionaries or dicts uh, last time. Um, there's some text here I won't I won't go through, but um, we can just use the um, use Python to to see how this works. Now I'm going to go back to Python two because uh, dictionaries are one area which changed between Python 2 and Python 3 um, in that they used to be um, unordered and now they're, they're more ordered, but there's a, a special data type called ordered dictionary that, that you can use. So if I do Python, so I'm going to store some uh, telephone numbers here. So I'm going to have this dictionary called tel. Uh, in fact, you can see uh, that in my Python 2 here, I entered them, Jack and then Sape, uh, as these two individuals. And then, But then when I print out the dictionary, they're in the opposite order. Um, so this doesn't matter because we're going to use keys to look up values, not positions. But um, it's just a good thing to keep in mind that potentially they, the dictionary won't always be in, in, uh, in order. So if I copy this next line and, and enter it, I've now got, I've now added a, a third phone number, um, which happens to be now at the end of the dictionary, but the order is, is not important. Um, so if I want to uh, pull up someone's number, I can just use the handy key-based indexing. So I put the person's um, name in, in, in brackets, and I get the, their associated number. Um, and if I want to delete, an entry. I can use this del um, operator, and now I've removed that that entry. And again, I can add an I can add an, another number here. Let's do this. And again, I've got and I've got three numbers again. If I want to just get the keys that are in this, there's this keys uh, method for my dictionary. So I can just find out what the keys are. This is handy because I can then um, look up all the different values if I want. Um, you, there's also this in uh, operator which will generate a, a Boolean value. So if I say is uh, Guido in tell, the answer is true, but if I say is Bob in tell, the answer is false. So um, you can use this in a, in a loop or an if statement or if, um, or uh, one example we saw is if you want to get the value. So if I do tell Bob I'm going to get an error. It's called a, it is, this particular kind of error is called a key error. So um, remember at the beginning we talked about how you want to use error messages to your advantage. You're always going to end up with error messages, and you don't want to get discouraged. You want to you know, read those error messages and try to figure out what the computer is telling you. So what this is telling us is that first we get this thing that says trace back, most recent call last. So this is the most recent. Uh, Thing that the computer did is, is shown last, so it's kind of in order, and it says, uh, um, in this case we're just using uh, standard input from the, from the command line, line one, that's just this line that we just entered, um, and it's saying there's a key error, Bob, which says this key Bob is not in the thing that you were looking at, so we got an error. So, um, so this allows us to do things like, so that, now we know what the error is, but th this allows us to do things like if Bob in tell, tell Bob. 
and I didn't indent properly. IPython should do the indentation for you. Um, so what happened here was um, I entered uh, this, this, I made this if statement and then it gave me one more line. I just hit enter and then it executed that, that, that block. So what happened was that, that if statement wasn't true. But if I, did, if I change this to irv, so now I'm going to do if irv intel, and now it's going to again bring up another thing. I can hit tab, and I can do tell irv. Now it prints out the phone number. So the advantage of having this if statement where I use this you know, is the key in the dictionary, it prevents me from getting an error. This is something you want to do in these kind of situations because uh, if, if that, maybe you, want the, maybe you want the error to come out and then that, that, that tells you something's wrong in your code. But there might be cases where you, you have, uh, you're looking for something that may or may not be in the dictionary. You don't want to get an error that, that kills your code. Um, so the dictionary also has a, uh, a method called items. This will give us both the uh, the keys and the values. So it, what it what it prints out is a list of key value pairs, which are uh, tuples. So you can see that's a tuple, and this is a list of three tuples. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, if you get the dot, 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 then hit enter again and see if it works. It's blank. Okay, so if, if, if you don't get any output from that if statement, it's possible that uh, it wasn't, the, the expression that you put in the if statement wasn't true. So that the thing that was after the if statement was, so I, I, I don't know what you wrote exactly, but it might be that. Um, so, uh, 